Hello friends, this video on NEET Wave Optics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's look at question number 20. Uh, light waves travel in vacuum along the x-axis. Which of the following may represent the wave fronts? Now from our knowledge of wave fronts, we know that the direction of propagation of a wave is always perpendicular to that of the wave front. Now here in this question, it says that the light wave travels along the x-axis. So from this, we can conclude that the wave front, so if we actually talk about the wave front, which should be perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the light waves, that means the wave front must be perpendicular to x axis. So in that case, the wave front must be parallel to the y z plane, right? Let's say this is your x axis, this is your y axis. So if I say that the light waves are traveling along the x direction, that means along this direction. So that means the wave front has to be in the perpendicular direction. So the wave front will be somewhere in the y z plane. But it cannot be in the x plane, right? So now for something to be in the y z plane, what would be the expression? So if you look at all of these expressions, which one represents something which is in the y z plane or which is parallel to the y z plane? So if you look at the first option, x is equal to c. So what does that mean? That means x is equal to some constant. So the value of x is constant with time, right? So let's say that x is at one particular value, even though the time increases, but x always remain constant something like this. So basically x is equal to c would be a graph which would be parallel to the y z plane. As you can see here, this line is parallel to the y axis, right? So this may represent the wave front because x is equal to c would be a line which is parallel to the y z plane. Question number 21. Four light waves are represented by these four equations, interference fringes may be observed due to superposition of. So where can interference take place? Now we know that for interference, one of the important criteria is that the sources must be coherent. That means there must exist a constant phase difference between the waves. So there must be a constant phase difference between the waves. So knowing this, can you decide between which of these two interference can take place. So obviously interference can take place between 1 and 2 because they have a constant phase difference of epsilon. Right? Similarly, the uh, interference can also take place between 3 and 4 because again there is a constant phase difference of epsilon between them. So therefore A and D both are right options. Question number 22. The index of refraction of fused quartz is 1.472 for light of wavelength 400 nanometer and is 1.452 for light of wavelength 760 nanometer. Find the speeds of light of these wavelengths in fused quartz. Okay, so how do we define refractive index? So by now all of us know that refractive index is denoted by mu which is equal to the ratio of speed of light in vacuum to speed of light in any other medium, right? So looking at this now, C is always a constant. So we can say that refractive index is inversely proportional to the velocity, right? Now, so that means with, with this relation, we can say that mu1 by mu2 will be equal to v2 by v1. Right now, let now just see that how do we make use of this expression. Now, in case one, when we are talking about uh, the fused quads, so that's our first scenario. Okay, so in this case, we can say that v two we have to find out the speed of light in fused quads. Right, so in fused quads, the speed would be equal to v one into mu one divided by mu two. Correct. So what would be V1? V1 is nothing but the speed of light in air, that is C. I mean, speed of light in vacuum, that is C. And then what do you have? And now the refractive index in vacuum, that is mu1, is 1. And the refractive index in fused quartz is 1.472. 
So the value of C is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. This divided by 1.472. It comes out to be 2.03 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So this would be the speed of light in fused quartz corresponding to 400 nanometer wavelength. Right now, in the second scenario, when the light wavelength of light is 760 nanometer, then the value of mu is changing. Right, so therefore, the value of speed of light would also change because now in this case it would be c into 1 divided by 1.452. So, only this value is changing. So, this would be 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by 1.452, which is equal to 2.07 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So, these two would be the speeds of light of these two wavelengths in fused quartz. Question number 23. The separation between the consecutive dark fringes in a Young's double slit experiment is 1 millimeter. Okay. So, what is this 1 millimeter? It is nothing but the value of beta. Because two consecutive dark fringes separation is nothing but the fringe width. The screen is placed at a distance of 2.5 meters from the slits. So this is the value of capital D and the separation between the slits is 1 millimeter. So this is the value of small d. So we have to find out the wavelength of light used for this experiment. So how do we express fringe width? So fringe width is equal to cap lambda capital D by small d. So you see beta is given capital D and small d all are given. So, lambda will be equal to beta into small d divided by capital D. So, beta is given as 1 millimeter. So, 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 into d. Small d is 1 millimeter that is 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 meters divided by uh, capital D which is 2.5 meters. So, this comes out to be 0 0.4 into 10 to the power minus 6 meters or this can be written as 400 nanometers. So, this is the wavelength of light that is used in this experiment. Question number 24. White light is used in Young's double slit experiment. Find the minimum order of the violet fringe. Lambda is equal to 400 nanometer which overlaps with a red fringe. So, here we are talking about two different fringes. One we are talking about the violet fringe. And we are also talking about the red fringe. Right. So, how do we find out now for the bright fringes, how do we find out their positions from the central uh, bright fringe? So, for that we make use of this expression y n is equal to n 1 lambda 1 d divided by small d. Similarly, in this case also we will make use of the expression. Now, let me denote this as yv that means this is the position of the bright fringe for violet and here we say that the position for the red fringe will be equal to n2 lambda 2 capital D by small d right now what are we expecting we are expecting the violet fringe to overlap with the red fringe now when will the overlap happen so, whenever we talk about the overlap, that actually means that the position of the violet fringe will be the same as the position of the red fringe. That's quite obvious, right? Let's say if this is your central fringe, this is the position of the violet fringe. And if the violet fringe and the red fringe are overlapping, that means both of them are at the same position. So, therefore, we can say N1 lambda 1 capital D by small d is equal to N2 lambda 2 capital D by small d. So, the d's will cancel out. So, we can say N1 by N2 is equal to lambda 2 by lambda 1. So, the value of lambda 2 that is uh, for the red fringe it is given as 700 nanometers and for the violet fringe it is given as 400. So, this the ratio is 7 is to 4. Now, what could be the minimum possible value because in the question it is asking for the minimum order of wavelength. So, we now know the ratio of N1 and N2 but since we are looking for the minimum value, so we can say that N1 is equal to 7 and N2 is equal to 4. So, basically the 7th fringe of violet will overlap with the 4th fringe of red. So, in the question we are asked the minimum order of the violet fringe. So, the question is asking for the order of the violet fringe. So, violet fringe which order? So, the answer would be the 7th violet fringe will overlap with the 
fourth red fringe so so the exact answer would be 7 so the minimum order of the violet fringe which is overlapping is 7 question number 25 A transparent paper refractive index 1.45 of thickness 0.02 mm is pasted on one of the slits of Y Young's double slit experiment which uses monochromatic light of wavelength 620 nanometers how many fringes will cross through the center if the paper is removed so it it's like the normal Young's double slit experiment the only difference is that we have introduced this transparent paper of some thickness t and refractive index mu so the value of mu is given as 1.45 and the thickness is given as 0.02 mm okay now we now what normally happens whenever we introduce a slab the entire fringe pattern shifts so there is a fringe shift involved right so and how do we calculate how many fringes got shifted so the number of fringes shifted is equal to the fringe shift that is the total shift of the fringes divided by the fringe width that means the width of one fringe so this is how we calculate the number of fringes shifted so fringe shift is given by mu minus 1 into t capital d by small d and fringe width is given by lambda capital d by small d so this will cancel so this is equal to mu minus 1 into t divided by lambda so mu is given as 1.45 minus 1 into t is given as 0.02 into 10 to the power minus 3 this divided by lambda which is given as 620 nanometers that is 620 into 10 to the power minus 9 so this comes out to be 1.45 into 10 to the power minus 5 into 10 to the power 6 this is equal to 14.5 so these many fringes will cross through the center if the paper is removed because due to the introduction of the paper these many fringes are getting shifted right so therefore the answer would be 14.5 So with this, we have reached towards the end of this lesson on wave optics. Now, as I have mentioned before, also that from neat perspective, three topics are extremely important in this chapter. One is Young's double slit experiment, second is diffraction, and third is uh, the resultant interference when two waves superimpose. So these are the three important topics. So you can see that in most of the previous years' questions papers of neat. Questions have been asked from one of these topics, so please prepare these topics uh, properly. And I hope that this uh, video on a uh, neat series wave optics uh, must have been useful to you. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes, and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.